jetzt hier in Athen, äh, gegenüber vom äh, Archäologischen Museum. Ähm, und wir haben uns heute Mittag äh, mit der ähm, Anwältin getroffen, die eben auch in diesem Bereich arbeitet. Das ist äh, Jota Masoridu. I'm getting better by, by saying it. <lacht> Hello. Und Jota hat äh, zugesagt uns ein bisschen was über die Situation hier in Griechenland, aber auch in, insgesamt in der Europäischen Union zu erklären, auch was gerade auf der europäischen Ebene vor sich geht. Ja, uh, yeah, let's just start by, um, if you can tell us a little bit about the situation on Lesbos and on Moria. Uh, we visited the place there that used to be um, a refugee registration camp for months, but since last week, uh, suddenly it's the EU hotspot. Mm -hmm. uh, did something uh, substantially change or did just the name change? What do you think? Um, as far as I know, when as you tell me also, you just came from there, there's nothing changed. And uh, not only this, uh, it's deteriorating because the weather is changing now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the authorities are completely incapable to deal with the huge number of uh, arrivals. Uh, this applies for the Greek authorities and the European agencies that are coming to support and say that they will create the hotspot as a collective idea towards the massive uh, influx of uh, refugees. Uh, so we have um, a complete violation of uh, human rights and we have people that cannot be treated in hospitals and waiting in the queue uh, and it's completely unacceptable to continue this and say that this is the European reaction. spots as they operate now is completely ineffective and violating the national law and this is a collective European responsibility. Uh, as far as the closed borders are, con are concerned, um, Greece uh, has to open the border in the north because now it's enough uh, the people that we see that have been thrown in the sea. Imagine that if they could cross from Istanbul, Edirne, Greece, it would be much more safe and many, many thousands of lives should be saved from these routes directly to the north. Um, I believe that sooner or later, one country after another will start closing borders. Uh, of course, uh, in the European Union, closing borders violate the basic fundamental ideas of constructing the European Union. And we see how, when problems started, how everybody forgets the European identity and the collective identity and starts to operate on a nation state reaction. And uh, I am afraid that this will apply to solutions that are legally, humanitarian, and ethically unacceptable. <laughs> They say uh, they weren't ready for filming people. And they were ready because I have just to remind that the crisis in Syria started in 2011. They knew that this is a war that will continue, despite all the proper attempts that they tried to push it under the carpet as a problem. Syria and in general the situation in the Middle East, in Iraq also, what is happening, uh, the situation in the refugee camps in Lebanon, Jordan, and Turkey is also a very big issue. So I think that everybody knows what was going to happen. And uh, now most of the states, I would say all of them, are dealing with the situation like to show, ah, as a state I can't do anything else, I will push it to someone else. Like it's a ball, a hot potato, but we are pushing from one state to the other. Uh, the solution of uh, that everybody will keep staying in Turkey, but already hosts two million refugees, numbers that Europe not, could not even imagine. I don't think it's safe because from Turkey, uh, Syrians are not safe uh, from being deported back to Syria or other neighbor countries where they face also problems. So there is a problem. <laughs> And this panic uh, maybe has a reason behind. Uh, maybe the reason is to implement uh, fear and panic to the people, to implement more militarization in the border areas and more police and more security. 
But I think that the real reaction is to follow this with logic. It's, lo it's logical what is happening when you have a war in one country. It's clear that you will have this war will produce refugees. So uh, we have to take it on under logical examination and think how we can deal with this. And this is to apply the humanitarian standards and international law, proper reception and treatment as a refugee population according to the Geneva Convention for Refugees. This is international law since the 50s. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. <laughs>